With Growlers head coach Eric Wellwood. Eric, uh, an entertaining game seven in which the Growlers come out on top. I mean, summarize the game for us. Yeah, very good game by us, by both teams, honestly. Um, it was a game seven game. We played very, very good defensively. You know, we stuck to our game plan. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a really, really good game. We capitalized on our chances when we needed to, shut them down when we needed to. I thought the boys played fantastic. We talk about the defensive effort here tonight, limiting to something like 18 shots on goal, and they didn't get a shot in the third period until the final moments, it felt like. I mean, that's a pretty supreme defensive effort. Yeah, and, I, that, you know, I think that's been our Achilles heel for a lot of the season, but, you know, it's, you know, it's something we needed to focus on in the playoffs, and the boys have been a, doing a great job understanding the concepts, uh, buying into, you know, knowing how you need to win. You know, in the playoffs, it's hard to outscore teams, especially a, a team like Reading, who, you know, we saw at the beginning of the series when we were giving up some quality chances, the puck was going in the back of the net. And, you know, we really had to change our focus and our game style. And the boys did a fantastic job in picking that up, um, you know, in a, in very, very quickly. And, yeah, it was really, really good defensively. So, uh, you know, that's what we needed to do in order to win. Darian Plouffe has proven, it feels like, time and time again that he's a playoff performer, scoring a shorthanded goal to get it started. I mean, what did you What did you see on that goal, and what did you like about uh, Plouffe tonight? Yeah, goal was great. I, I, I thought J-Mac did a very good job at passing it over kind of early and, you know, got Nagel moving a little bit. Um, he still had an opportunity to save it, but Plouffe made a great shot. Uh, you know, he, and he, he, Plouffe has been through this before, and you could, he, it's, it ain't hard to tell. <laughs> you know, he... he uh, he knows what what needs to be done. He knows how to play defensively. He knows, how, you know, to get the puck deep when you need to get it deep. His penalty killing is fantastic. He's such a team guy. Um, you know, when I say that, it's not just in the dressing room. It's by his play. You know, he, he understands the concepts of playing within a team structure, and uh, he led the way. And you know, it's a huge boost to our younger guys to see that. And you know, yeah, fantastic job by him. And full credit to the Royals, uh, you know, battled all season long uh, for the division in the regular season and ultimately finishing in seven games here. I mean, what made them such a formidable opponent down the stretch? Yeah, like, <laughs> they're a very, very good team. I told you before, maybe even before the series, that this is probably going seven. And it did, you know, um, it could have went either way. It really, really could have. I think you flip a coin, you call heads, and it landed heads. And we were, we were fortunate to get through them. Um, you know, they made us very, very nervous as a team. We knew that if we give up any scoring chances, it's probably going in the back of the net. And that was something you saw tonight. You know, we give up some call, some scoring chances, and bang, it was in their net. Um, so, yeah, it's it should have went seven like it did. It's a great learning lesson for our team. Um, you know, I, I think it could have went either way. We could easily be sitting here. I was talking about how good our season was, um, but we're just the lucky ones that get to move on. Yeah, the two defensemen, Hoffenmeyer and Finkelstein, scoring uh, you know in, in the biggest stakes game of the season. I mean, they've been rock solid uh, all season. What did you make of their games tonight? Yeah, fantastic. Um, especially Hoff, you know, he, he's been playing at such a higher level than he has all season long. Not that it wasn't bad or good; it was really, really good. Uh, but he's really raised his level. I mentioned earlier, he's somebody that's been through long playoff runs before, and he knows that, you know, if you want to go far, every individual has to raise their game, and he's one that definitely has. Um, you know, he scored again, and now we, what is it, 11 games now? So <laughs> that's something to, uh, to be very proud of, and it's not just his production. It's his, um, you know, he's a beast on defense. It's very difficult to get a shot on our net when he's playing out there. So good job by him with Fink. You know, he's proven throughout this regular season that he's one of the top defensemen in this league. Again, tonight, he proved it. And, you know, again, with him, people may knock his defensive play, but we have full confidence with his defensive play. It's been elevated at the right moments. He's making high-end defensive plays. Um, yeah, I couldn't be happier for those guys. and. Yeah, great job. Keith Petrozelli seemingly saving the best for last. Really saw what felt like improvement out of him on a game-by-game -game basis. I mean, what uh, allowed him to be successful tonight in your mind? Well, I think the boys are playing so good in front of him, it's giving him a lot of confidence. 
I think at the beginning of this series, he may have lacked a little bit of confidence in himself, but it's hard to fault him when you give up the quality chances that we were giving, especially with players like Gooch, who have proven they can score in this league and are high, high, high end players. Um, you know, we, we as a staff could have potentially not played him going into game five, which is a do or die. And I don't want to say it was consideration, but I think you definitely have to think about that. Um, but at the end of the day, we we have full confidence in him, and, and you can see it why he played seven games in a series, back to back to back games, and he he's a gamer. I've been saying that for from day one that he's a gamer, and you know the the more the grander the game, the more he seems to step up, and we're very fortunate to have somebody like him in our net. You know how I like to drop stats on you. Just the eighth team in ECHL history to come back from down 3-1 and apparently just the second to win a 6-7th and seventh game on the road. I mean, what's, what's special about this team that we're, that we're doing this? Yeah, didn't know that stat prior for you telling me before the game. Thank you very much. Um, the character on this team is so high. They, they, you know, the boys want to win so bad and their will and determination is second to none you know I feel as a coach I, I, I I'm so lucky to have a group of guys in that room that that care so much and that have you know such such will I don't even know how else to describe it they just have will and they want to win and they're so close as a team and they came together and you could see what they can do I mean like you mentioned I think Redding had 10 shots with five minutes to go in the third still and that's because they bought completely into the game plan they knew the only way we could beat them is if we out defend them and we'll get our looks when we get our looks and to capitalize when we do get our looks and they did that and yeah I, as a coach I, I I'm so lucky to have uh, a group of guys like this down 3-1 on the series was there a turning point in your mind I don't know I, not that I can say that there was you know, I, I thought we were playing good, not not at the level that was required, as you've seen game five, six, and especially tonight. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know if there was a, a turning point. I just think that we knew we did not want to go home early. And I, I would even tell my staff that, be like, I don't know what I'm going to do if this ends tomorrow or tonight. <laughs> I haven't thought about it. And I think the boys are in that same mindset. They want to keep playing. And they willed themselves to win this series. Barry? Uh, you had half an hour to celebrate this series, so um, Florida, um, that's a real challenge. I mean, I saw them a couple of weeks ago. It's no surprise for me to tell you they, they, they're as heavy, heavier, way heavier than any team in this division. Um, that presents a new, a new challenge for you guys. What do you, th obviously something you think you can deal with and adapt to? Well, it's gonna be a, a challenge to adapt to it for sure. Um, you know, us playing Trois-Rivier in the first round, I think, bodes well for us coming into this series because they're very heavy and play hard as well, which is a good thing. So we have some experience with it. You know, unfortunately, we never got to play Florida once this season. So it's all going to be new to, to myself and, and to a lot of our guys. You know, we still have some guys on this team that were part of the championship run um, that played against them and beat them. Um, so that they'll have some familiarity with them. But I think it's going to be adjustment for sure. It's hard to say that I've really thought about them at all. I haven't watched a single game in, you know, months on them because of our schedule and, you know, with our playoffs who we've had to deal with and we've been so focused on our day-to-day -day task and living in the moment that, you know, I know uh, we don't know what to expect too much from them. We're going to get an opportunity, thank God, that, you know, we have three days here or four days before our, our next game and we're going to be able to see what they bring. But, you know, I think the first game is going to be a good feeling out and, you know, seeing how they play. And, you know, you can pre-scout all you want, but until you get on that ice, you don't know what it feels like. So looking forward to the challenge, um, but I can't say I've thought about it enough.